So my name is Vadra Shira and this is my talk for today. So like many of you, I'm sure, I've been looking at what's been happening in America with the police violence and the Black Lives Matter and the pain and suffering on display there and being rather appalled by it and left with the question, what can I do about this? What should I do about this? What is the best response to this? And I don't have a, a simple answer to that. But there were, there were a few things that I've been reflecting on from the Buddhist tradition I thought I might share here. So the first one is that the traditional Buddhist response to suffering is karana. So karana is the desire to ease the suffering or for the suffering of another person to ease. And it arises when metta meets the suffering of another person. So I'm sure we've all heard of Karana before, if we've been around for any time, but uh, it's probably worth reminding ourselves of what the, some of the enemies of Karana are. So two common responses, uh, and I notice these in myself as well at times when faced with what's going on, is, um, well, sentimentality on the one hand and horrified anxiety on the other. So sentimentality uh, arises when we just don't really want to take in the, the breath of the suffering and we just kind of sentimentalize it and say, there, there, it's terrible. And then we kind of walk away from it without really engaging. And on the other hand, horrified anxiety is where we just feel overwhelmed by what's on display, what we're seeing. Um, maybe you, you get this on your social media feeds where you just can't stop looking at it and yet you can't feel like you can do anything about it. You're numbed into a horror fat anxiety that isn't productive. So we need to be aware of these responses. These responses in us won't help ourselves and won't help the world. And um, the antidote to both of those um, enemies of Karana is to do metta is to cultivate as much metta as we can in a straightforward as way as we can and uh, then bring that metta to bear upon the suffering that we see, the people who are suffering in particular. Karana comes out of metta. Uh, we can't short circuit that path to karana which begins with metta. And once we have enough metta, we can work then on taking in as much as we can of what's going on without horror or hard-heartedness or sentimentality. And we also need to practice more generally, of course, too. Um, the Bodhisattva, the spiritually advanced practitioner, and indeed the Buddha himself, the reason they're able to stay with suffering and to be really able to be open to the world's suffering in all its breath is that they've gone beyond the concerns of a narrow self. Uh, they're not concerned with the self anymore. There's nothing to get in the way of uh, that heart of enlightenment that is there potentially in all of us, which from which an unlimited uh, flow of love and karana can flow. So they can take in the full scale of the world's suffering. But in Buddhism as well, we don't just sit there and meditate and metta and uh, cultivate karana in that way. Um, to quote Sangharakshita, um, the founder of our Buddhist community, it's not just that you sit on your meditation mat radiating metta towards the world, but keeping well out of the way of the world. It is that metta enters into your action and expresses itself in terms of non-violent action for the benefit of others. So metta enters into our actions and expresses itself in terms of non-violent action for the benefit of others. So what might those actions look like? Well, I think that that's something that we all have to then work out um, it might mean educating yourselves about what's at stake um, and talking to others about this. Uh, I watched a very good documentary last night called The 13th, which I can recommend on Netflix about the history of systemic racism in America, for example. Or it might mean reading about Dr. Ambedkar, who uh, was a great social and Buddhist activist in India, working with the caste system there, which is just as bad and in many ways worse than the s systemic racism uh, in America at the moment. Um, it might mean joining protests, it might mean donating money to causes such as Black Lives Matter and so on. And it might mean here in Ireland looking at our own systems and what we're unknowingly participating in as well uh, by how we spend our money, by our consumer choices, by how we relate to the people at the margins of our own society here as well. So we may not have the American system of mass incarceration, uh, but we have other ways of dehumanizing people here in this country as well, such as direct provision. So maybe we can look at that as well. 
And then to finish, I wanted to finish with a quote from Sangharakshita. Um, he talks about why I am a Buddhist. Uh, so I'll finish with this quote. He says, this is one of the reasons why I am a Buddhist. I believe that humanity is basically one. I believe that it is possible for any human being to communicate with any other human being, to feel for any other human being, to be friends with any other human being. This is what I truly and deeply believe. This belief is part of my experience. It is part of my life. It is part of me. This is what religion really means. It is what you most truly and deeply believe. It is what you are prepared to die for. It is your life. It is what makes you what you are. It is what makes you behave in the way that you do. Religion is therefore a very important thing. In fact, it is the most important thing.